Hello and welcome to this Pivotal Container Service demo. I'm Dan Basket, Technical Marketing at Pivotal Software, and today we're going to look at Kubernetes network isolation with NSXT. Starting with PKS 1.1, Kubernetes nodes are deployed on a separate subnet, making it easier to apply security policies to isolate and secure the clusters from one another. This helps us avoid the noisy neighbor problem with each cluster being installed on separate network segments. With nodes and pods on separate networks, we have simpler network ops. And our security management is made easier with automation of security groups. Now let's take a quick look at a demo on an environment with PKS 1.1 installed on vSphere with NSXT 2.1. We start by logging into our PKS API that's been set up and configured. We'll then look to see if there are any clusters installed. There aren't any clusters, so now we'll take a look at the plans available so that we can create a cluster. We'll create a medium cluster, which in default in PKS 1.1 uses multiple masters, three, and five worker nodes. And with NSX, it will configure a load balancer in front of the master nodes, as well as all the other necessary NSXT objects. With our cluster creation started, we can take a look in vSphere to see what's going on. If we refresh the interface, we'll see the node VMs all being created. And now the system is working on building out our Kubernetes cluster. We can also take a look at the NSX interface, and we'll see that there aren't any load balancers created yet. Now we can go back to our cluster creation status and fast forward in time until it's completed. <laughs> With our cluster finish creation, we can grab the UUID so that we can search for the objects created within NSXT. Now if we go back to the NSX console and look at the load balancer configs, we'll see we have a load balancer with the new cluster UUID included in the name. If we take a look at the members of the load balancer pool, we'll notice three nodes. These should be our three master nodes. If we take a look at the vSphere console, we can confirm. And these are the IPs of our three master nodes. If we go back to the NSX console, we can do a search for the cluster UUID and get a list of all the objects that have that UUID as part of their name. Notice there are a lot of objects that were created for the cluster, including switches, NAT rules, logical ports, and firewall entries. We can explore any of these objects for more detail. In this case, we have a load balancer created. It's providing access to the Kubernetes API on port 8443. Now that we've validated our cluster was indeed created, we can connect to it. Using the PKS cluster command, we can get the IP address of the master to connect to. We can then use the PKS get credentials command to pull down the credential information and put it inside a kubectl context for use by the command line. Now we'll ping our host name of our master host just to verify our DNS is working correctly. We verify that. And now we'll issue a kubectl config and use the context that we created earlier with the get credentials command. Then we can issue a kubectl get pods in all the namespaces. And we'll see all the pods that were created when the cluster was created. This includes all the cube system and all the NSX PKS infrastructure. And now we have a cluster ready for use. Thanks for watching our demonstration.